everyone, how are we all? I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my October favourites. That took a second. Um, but I'm gonna go through my skincare, makeup. We're skipping style for this month because I feel like if you see me on Instagram, you see me wear the same things over and over and over again. I will link down below for you some like style blog posts I've done recently so you can see my favourites, but it's like same old, same old. And then as always, rounding it up with a quick chat about books at the end. Um, so let's talk skincare. Ooh, me and my skin, we've had, we haven't got on this month. We've had some real relationship issues. I don't know what it is. Um, in the Case Jane Hughes video, I will link that up there for you. You could see it, like that was my skin at its worst. And some of the comments are like, Anna, what's going on with your skin? What is happening? I was like, I do not know. The blemishes were coming and they were not going. And every morning there was a new one. And I think I made it worse by picking and prodding and squeezing and popping. Um, and yeah, probably just not helping matters. Um, but it, it was bad. I, I don't know what caused it. I don't know if it was hormonal, something I'd eaten, something I'd put on my face, if it was a reaction to a product or ingredient. I haven't been able to work that out, unfortunately. Um, and it's really taken me like the solid month to recover. Like it wasn't great. Um, I think it kind of started when we were in Lisbon and it hasn't been great for the rest of the month. Um, and yeah, we're kind of, I feel like I've got no makeup on now. I feel like we're getting, we're getting to the end of it. I've now got some kind of scarring here. I've got a little friend here and I'm just trying to really give my skin lots of juice and help when it comes to repairing itself. So that's where I'm at with my skin. But there were a few things that I did that I feel like, every time I did it, I was like, okay, I feel like we're getting one step closer to not having a new eruption every 12 hours. And that was just being really diligent with masks, cleansing really well, double cleansing, making sure that my skin was just like clean. I've been working out, I've been eating lots of vegetables, I've been like having supplements and just really trying to like sort everything else out and hopefully the skin would follow. And we're getting to the point where it's finally like, it's being dragged along. But I really, really found masks to help and just really calm things down. Um, and this mask was brilliant. I had another facial at Pfeiffer Sal. I never know how to say this place. I'll link it down below for you. Trying really hard to get like regular facials in. And they use this product. This is from the Stige Verdant and it is the Organic Peat Facial Mask. Um, it's organic peat, it is pretty rank. Oh, I can do this now. Hey, there you go, look at that. Oh, and it's back. I had their hydrating facial, um, but every facial there is always like personalized. You could see that I was having some problems, especially on my chin. And by that, that point it was still quite like inflamed. And she put this on, three minutes is all it took. And she took it off and I was like, oh my word, that looks so much better. It was so much like less red and puffy. Um, so I walked out, paid for my facial and then ended up having to buy the mask that she'd used as well. You can get this online. It is quite pricey. Um, so I thought another kind of clarifying mask that I used over the month that I feel helped and also is much more affordable is the Paula's Choice. This is the clear purifying clay mask um, for blemish prone skin. I haven't actually used any other products from the Paula's Choice range. That's really hard to say quickly. Um, but I always hear good things about it. I think is it their BHA solution that a lot of people use and really enjoy? Um, I feel like this did a really good job of just helping to like clarify, clear out this area um, without being drying. Like when I took it off, my skin felt quite comforted instead of feeling really stripped. Um, so I really, really enjoyed using that. I thought I would throw this one into the mix as a good like budget buy. So while this area was having a moment, I really wanted to treat the rest of my skin to some like eight, like top, top tier skincare products. Um, just cause I was like, if you're having issues here, let's try and like detract, let's detract the eye to a different area. So I really tried to focus on like my forehead, my nose, like and on the tops of my cheeks, really trying to keep that glow. So I used the Josh Rosebrook Advanced Hydration Mask a ton and I think I'm about halfway through it now. Yeah, halfway through. You do not need a lot of this. I take like a pea sized amount, I warm it up in between my fingers and then just spread it in this sort of area whilst I put the clarifying mask on my chin. And yeah, it's 
brilliant. Like whenever I use this and then I did like my foundation on top, like this is a really good mask to use in the morning. It's not exfoliating in any way, so it doesn't aggravate the skin. You're not left a bit like red afterwards or angry, anything like that. It's so soothing. So I'd use this in the morning, like have my shower, come out, use this, put that on. Then I would have my breakfast, rinse it off, do the rest of my skincare routine, put on my foundation and I was like, holy cow, my foundation is looking in incredible. So I really, really enjoyed using this and I think the rest of my skin is thanking me for it. Um, another sort of spotty skin recommendation is this Votary, uh, the Blemish Rescue Oil. This is a oil, but it also has salicylic acid in. Absolutely brilliant because I feel like when I get blemishes, I don't want to you don't want to dry them out, but you also don't want to throw like loads of oil on them. So this is really good because I feel like you're still getting that juice into the surrounding area, but you've also got that salicylic acid that's really going to help to sort of get that spot and like move it on and out, you know? Um, this is brilliant. I actually get so many DMs from people um, saying that you two have used this product and really enjoy it and it's worked for you as well. So definitely my top pick when it comes to real like on the spot treatments. So with all this masking that I was doing, I was like cleansing, then doing my mask, then doing my normal routine. And I've really tried to amp it up with serums because I feel like they were a very light way to add hydration to my face without putting on like a load of oil or like a really heavy, rich moisturizer. So I've been like, I've been, I've been up in my game. I've got the Drunk Elephant Bee Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum, which just is a classic. Um, I've been using this for basically the last year. I mix it in the morning with their Sea Firm A Day Serum and then in the evening with the, is it the Fram, Fram Boost? The Glycolic Serum, it's great. Um, also the Longcom Advanced Genevieve, the uh, Youth Activating Concentrate is also brilliant. I am working with Longcom, this is not part of that. Oh, will this video go live? Ah, I think I've got 20% off when this video goes live. Yes, I will link down the details to that down below if you're interested in getting, I think is it 20% off my top 14 favorites? It was supposed to be 10. I like got a few extras in there for you, but all the information for that will be linked down below. And also this um, Chanel Le Lift Serum. <gasps> oh my word. This is, this leaves your skin so glowy. So, so, so glowy. It actually really reminds me of Glossier Future Dew. Um, thoughts on future you coming. I think hopefully in the next video, I've got like a 20 minute makeup routine, which is basically almost a part two to this video because it also contains more of my favorites from the month of October. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. But I feel like, yeah, there's something, there's something similar in the formulas of those two. So all of those three really, really enjoyed, didn't find any problems when using them. Right, that is everything in the bathroom done. I'm gonna throw on a little bit of makeup and come back and we will talk about my three beauty favorites of the month. Because I don't think that I've mentioned enough that I had some skin issues this month. Let's talk about concealer and what I use to cover it up on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm not like, too bothered about blemishes. I feel like normally I use something like RMS Beauty, like Glossier Stretch even, but these were red. They were extreme. Um, and like when I was around the house, I was trying really hard just to let them breathe and like have their moment, but sometimes you just want to cover them up and that's cool. And the best thing that I found out of everything that I have is the Clay de Peau. This is their concealer in the shade, I think Ivory? Ivory. Looks a little something like this. <laughs> there you go. Very, very nice. It's very simple, really. It's just a stick concealer. Um, the shade range is disgusting, quite frankly. It's terrible. Um, so something to note. They really, really need to sort that out. But what I was doing was tapping it onto my finger, like warming up the product slightly, taking my blemishes, and then dabbing them on, and then just kind of working the product into my skin, using my finger, and really trying to blend it in so it didn't sit on the skin, you couldn't see it. It just works really nicely. It's like very full coverage, but not drying at all. Um, definitely one to look into. Like, look at that, ta-da! Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite something, this, this concealer. I got it from Alana, I didn't buy it. It's really expensive, but I feel like it does do a good job of just taking that redness out without looking dry or like obvious on the skin at all. Then I would take my foundation brush and just go over the top with it. Um, I feel like a good dupe, I wouldn't say it's a cheap dupe, but a more affordable dupe is the, the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage. Um, you know, it comes in that palette, it's that really kind of tough, like dry concealer, not selling it. 
but you know what I mean, like that is, that kind of works in the same way that if you warm it up with your finger and then put it onto your skin, you get a more sort of natural finish. I'm actually gonna do a little bit around my nose. I haven't put concealer around here yet, but the tone of it really works for me. It's very brightening, which I like. I do have some other base favorites, um, but like I mentioned, keep an eye out for that 20 minute uh, beauty routine because I feel like that goes more in depth into my current uh, foundation primer situation. Situation? Who do I think I am? Alana. I have a new favorite brow gel thanks to Katie Jane Hughes and it is the Blink Brow Bar. It's the Clear Brow Gloss. I'm just doing this for the hell of it now just because I can. There you go. It looks a little something like this. Tiny, tiny little wand. I actually quite like to remove quite a bit of the product before I put it on and I find that it goes best on the brows if you don't overload them. So I do a very like light coating. Um, but yeah, she used this on me when she did my makeup and I just loved it. I feel like it really held the brows up, gave a very soap brow standing to attention, very fluffy look. And it just, it just lasted really well. I came back like hours later after she'd done my makeup and it lasted, so well. Also very good for flyaways. I tend to just do anything that's left in the brush. Just get rid of those, lovely jubbly. Not crusty, not crispy, but keeps them in place without having to like get a bar of soap and wet it and do the whole like caboodle. So really, really, really enjoying this. Now let's have a quick chat about eyeshadow. I do have some thoughts about Victoria Beckham Beauty, but I will save that for the next video. There is a shade that I do actually quite like after sort of bashing on Instagram stories a fair amount. Um, I have run out of Max Sober and the new one just isn't the same. And so I've been looking for a mid-toned warm brown. I mean, it's actually a very easy shade to find. Every brand does them. But I just couldn't find like, I couldn't find the right one. They were too warm, too dark, too cool, like too sheer, not buildable. Don't like the formula, it's patchy. Like I, I just couldn't find the right one. Um, so I was Googling around and I just wanted to find like a palette that had a shed load in so I could just like test them out and try and find a favorite amongst them. And also just be sorted for like warm matte browns for the rest of my life. Um, enter the Morphe, this is the Oh Boy 25D palette. I wouldn't say Morphe is a brand that particularly sings to me. I think I've used one of their eyeshadow palettes before. It was fine, nothing special. It was like that I tried and just passed on to a friend. But the colors in this, I mean, no one else would make a palette like this. It's so samey. There's probably just like five variations of the same eyeshadow in here. But for someone like me, this is absolute heaven. And there are some shades in here that I've really been enjoying. This one down here is particularly nice. This one here is perhaps the most like Mac sobery out of all of them. Um, but then I really like like this one, it's more orangey, like this one more kind of greeny. I mean, do you need this palette? No, but if you are a fan of like Mac sobery type shades, um, I feel like this palette's gonna sing to you in a, in a very beautiful voice. <laughs> so today I'm gonna use this one here, which is perhaps the most boring out of all 25 shades. It's a monthly favorites video, you know, and this has been a monthly favorite. So I'm just taking that all over the eyes in my usual way. It builds up quickly. And um, that is the one thing I would say about this palette and the reviews that I also saw online. Someone was saying that actually kind of the last two rows are actually quite dark. And I was like, yes, I'm so with you. They're definitely not as like sheer and neutral as you think. They do all come off quite dark on the lids. So a little goes a long way with this eyeshadow palette. Very quick, very easy. And I love the fact that you could wear a slightly different uh, warm toned matte brown practically every day of the month. There you go. <laughs> I have a feeling that Cult Beauty have 20% off Morphe at the moment. So that does make this palette very reasonable. Rest of the makeup on, I will make sure that I have put everything in the description box down below in case you're interested. And we're skipping style and moving straight on to books. I feel like we've had, I've had an, in, an interesting month with books. I've kind of read three and a half-ish. Um, the first book that I read, I started reading actually whilst we were away in Mallorca, Mallorca Travel Guide. If you wanna take a read, I'll link that in the description box down below for you. Um, and this is from Gia Tolentino. This is Trick Mirror Reflections on Self-Delusion. 
and you will see I've only got halfway through this book and admitting that I'm only halfway through this book is kind of hard because I feel like this is like the book everyone is reading on Instagram everyone is loving it it's not that I'm not loving it I actually just found it like quite a meaty read for me and I, I was kind of scared to like say this in a video which sounds silly because I feel like it exposes me slightly to like the level of reader that I am and it just got to the point where I was like I was really having to concentrate hard and like read paragraphs like the second time over just to really absorb the concept um so that doesn't make me feel too bright but just if you're in the same boat and you're reading this book and everyone's been like talking about how amazing it is and how beautifully written it is it is beautifully written but it, it does require quite a high level of concentration I have personally found and I just wanted like books that I could read like I was getting sleepy before bed I just sort of wanted really like something easy to digest something maybe a bit funny a bit comic I was just in the mood for something a little bit different so long story short I found myself in Southampton with like three hours to kill me and Mark were there before an event and it was raining and so we ended up in Waterstones and I was like you know what I'm gonna pick up a book I've forgotten to take this with me and I didn't have anything on me so I picked up the David Steris book Calypso um I'd seen a few people talk about this online I know the Hilo I know Dolly's a big fan um and it's just been it's been on my radar like I'd, I'd be interested in reading that I wasn't really sure what it was but I knew that I wanted to give it a go picked it up and in like three pages I was already laughing I thought it was just like the funniest thing ever um what a funny what a funny guy so he's a writer and he's written a mixture of short story fiction but then also writes like essays about his own life and thoughts and ponderings and this book was just so 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 funny amazing like you know the type of book that you're reading at night and you want to like stay awake because you need to know what happens next I love how he story tells I love how he thinks like what an eccentric like the story the, the actual story that's called Calypso in this is just utterly bizarre and kind of gross but also very very funny I love the stories of him and his family um his family I think his sister Amy is, an, is like a well-known actress in America I think so he's from this like well-known family and yeah just funny hilarious I want to go shopping with him and his siblings it sounds just utterly brilliant also he like lives down the road he lives over in west sussex i think so i'm like <laughs> local author even though he's american then i went on a david sedaris like book buying spree and basically bought every book that he's ever written that's that's those that's all those down there and i thought i'll work my way through in chronological order starting with the earliest one that i bought and then moving up to like his most recent one so the oldest one that I bought, he published in 1994. 94? Is it 97? 94. Um, and it's called Barrel Fever. And when I put up that I was reading this, people were like, this is a weird one. This is a weird one. And it, it, it was a weird one. Definitely not my favourite. Um, this is all fiction, aside from a tiny bit in the back, which are personal essays. I really, really, really enjoyed those. Um, he worked in a like Santa Land in a department store and I think there is actually a book called Santa Land Diaries and um, people said that's very funny like just, even just the little tiny bits in the back of this book is very enjoyable so might have to pick that one up because I didn't pick it up when I picked up the other like 10 um but yeah this wasn't my favorite it was a little bit too like wild and out there for me, I think I prefer when he writes about like his personal stories rather than fiction personally. Then I pre-ordered this bad boy and it finally arrived. It's Adam Kay, it was the night shift before Christmas. Um, he is obviously the best selling, best selling author. How many have they sold? Million copies, incredible, of This Is Going To Hurt, which was fabulous. He was a NHS doctor for seven years and he published his diaries during that time and it, they were, it was brilliant, it was like, funny, hilarious, heartbreaking, oh my word, the NHS is incredible, the doctors, everyone, nurses, cleaners, whoever is there, you're doing an amazing job, thank you so much. Um, and this is his festive version of that. So this is just a collection of his diary entries over the Christmas period for those however many years, I think it was seven years. Um, I'm only halfway through, oh no, okay, two thirds. I'm gonna finish this tonight and so far it's been, oh, it's 
so good. I was like laughing last night. There's a very interesting thing about a candy cane, needles, penises, just like, wow, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Again, it's the same thing as this is gonna hurt. Funny, heartbreaking, will fill you with just like, or for anyone really who works over the Christmas period. Thank you very much. Um, so really, really enjoyed that. So like I mentioned, three and a half, but if I finish this tonight, which I think I will, that means I'm on 29 books out of 30 for the year. It was my New Year's resolution to read 30 books this year because I turned 30 this year and I'm almost there. So pat on the back. All right, calm down. My head won't fit through the door. But that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. Everything will be linked down below as always. And I will see you on Wednesday with a brand new video. So see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.